This is Midnight Sun. As I think it's obvious from the way my voice is sounding, I guess it is clear that if I have not been doing the Midnight Sun programs in the last few weeks, it is because illness prevented me from doing so. It was a flu that left me without a voice and from which I am still not fully recovered, as you can hear. But well, we are here again and we are going to try to do our program. Today we will continue talking about what we talked about in the last episode, episode number 8 of Midnight Sun. We talked about uh, how can I change the world from my smallness. And today we'll continue talking about that. It is going to be the second program on this uh, topic. And to do that, we are going to talk about the butterfly effect today. Is it true that the slightest flutter of a butterfly in the Amazon rainforest or in the jungles of Sri Lanka can trigger a tornado in Texas or a typhoon in the Philippines? Because if this is so, perhaps it is true, after all, that uh, from our smallness we can really change the world. And to begin with, we will refer to a person who also made a comment on the subject of smallness. She was an American writer who won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1938. Her name was Paul S. Book. She said specifically, God, well, God, God can serve you as a concept, or perhaps you prefer the concept of the universe, or the source, or you prefer the principle of the creation of the universe, or whatever. Use whichever concept best fits your frame of mind. She said, specifically, God is not in the vastness of greatness. He is hid in the vastness of smallness. He is not in the general. He is in the particular. So, once again, how can we change the world from our smallness? If you think this program doesn't apply to you, you might be wrong, because you might discover new ideas. And as in the butterfly effect, maybe those news, new ideas will cause a bigger change within you and your life than you could ever have imagined. Midnight Sun, directed by Grain Kutanda. Welcome to Midnight Sun, whatever your ideas. 
feel welcome, whatever your way of seeing the world. Because, anyway, if you follow us on this program, you are going to see the world in a very different way in the end. And that is going to be to your benefit, because you are going to see reality from that worldview that we need to develop in order to survive on planet, planet Earth. And that means that you are going to see reality, your reality, in a way that is more in tune, more appropriate, more in line, in harmony with life and with the Earth. And that will always be a benefit for you. We have said that today we are going to talk about the butterfly effect. And all of this is part of the idea of how we can change the world from all smallness. And the butterfly effect has a lot to say about that. To convince us that we really can change the world from our insignificance, the butterfly effect comes to bring us a hopeful message. A message that uh, comes to us through a metaphor. But then, metaphors serve, uh, serve us well. For, as Gregory Bateson pointed out, they are, after all, the stuff of which reality is constructed. This metaphor says that the flutter of a butterfly in Southeast Asia, for example, can trigger a tornado in Texas. So powerful, so amazing, so daring. However, this is not a new idea, as there is a very old Chinese proverb that says the flapping of the wings of a butterfly can be felt on the other side of the world. Later, around the 1800s, we have a German philosopher, Johann Gottlieb Fichte, the founder of German idealism, who said you could not remove a single grain of sand from its place without thereby changing something through God all parts of the immeasurable whole. And on this idea was playing in his imagination a very well-known author in the science fiction literature, Ray Bradbury, who wrote Fahrenheit 451 and The Martian Chronicles. He wrote a short story entitled a sound of thunder, in which uh, he suggested a future in which one could travel back in time, to the point that uh, they were starting a tourist business of traveling to the past. Just after the presidential election in the country, in which a candidate with democratic ideas wins against a dictatorial candidate, the protagonist of this story is invited to take a trip to the time of the dinosaurs. Before he starts uh, his journey, the time travel tour company gives him a series of warnings. They tell him that uh, he must not touch anything or alter anything in the past, as any change there could disrupt the future, that is, his own time, the present in which they are all in. They tell him that he has to go along a marked path, which is a walkway that goes about four inches above the ground thanks to an anti-gravity system, so as not to disturb even the ground with his footsteps. However, once the journey begins, and finding himself in the world of uh, dinosaurs, our protagonist is suddenly confronted by the terrifying Tyrannosaurus Rex, and in his panic he flees crazed, losing the market path and stepping, without realizing it, on a butterfly from that world. Once safely in the time machine, he realizes what happened 
to the butterfly. And when he returns to his time in the future, he is horrified to find that the spelling of his language, English, is different from what he knew, and that the people and buildings are also different, wearing different clothes and looking different. However, the worst of it all came when he realizes that in the election that had been held the day before he left on his journey into the past, it was not the candidate of democratic ideas who had won the election, but the candidate of a dictatorial disposition who had already begun to rule with an iron fist. The death of that butterfly had set off a chain of consequences which had finally transformed the future and their present reality to a large extent. This is A Sound of Thunder, a short story by Ray Bradbury, who in a way was already playing with this idea of the butterfly effect in the 1952, more than a decade before the idea of the butterfly effect was scientifically proposed. But Bradbury's lucubration is by no means far-fetched. On YouTube you can find a video from the BBC in Spanish that offers us an example of a possible butterfly effect, which could have totally changed the future, to the point that, at this moment, our reality would be very different. In this BBC video, we are asked to imagine that the year is 1905, and the clock in the clock tower in Bern Switzerland is two minutes late. Imagine that a man who lives near this clock tower does not wake up at the planet time because of the two minute delay. In other words, he wakes up two minutes late. And in his haste of being late for the office, he gets nervous. He cleans himself, dresses and quickly eats his breakfast, but in his nerves He loses another three minutes, so he goes out five minutes later to the street. In his haste and mental confusion, he crosses the road without looking, and a car, which would have passed five minutes later if everything had happened normally, runs over all character, leaving him dead on the spot. This man, who in 1905 was trying to get to the office on time could have been Albert Einstein, who in 1905 published five academic papers that would be crucial for the science of our times. Specifically, it is said that 1905 was Albert Einstein's miracle year, because without the publication of those five scientific papers, GPS, television, computers, and mobile phones would not exist today. In fact, you would not be listening to me right now if Albert Einstein had died in 1905 by one of those chains of events. But how true is all this butterfly effect stuff? You may be asking yourself. It is all just a bunch of mambo-jambo. Can we trust it? Can we trust any of this? Well, let's look at it. Let's see the possible truth of all this. If really, from our smallness, we could bring about decisive changes in the course of human and earthly processes. Let's move from speculation and imaginative games to a scientific reality. According to leading social science research, we need 3.5% of the world's population to put their talents into action 
if we are to mitigate the effects of the climate and extinction emergency we are facing. And that is the aim of this radio space. Midnight Sun is the communication hub of the Rainbow Warriors 3.5 global campaign. Sun, if you are listening to us, consider yourself already part of the tribe. The tribe of all colors is the Rainbow Warriors 3.5 social movement we are currently building. If you are listening to us, consider yourself part of the tribe. Okay, but what does the science say about the butterfly effect? The butterfly effect is a concept that is uh, linked to the chaos theory. You may have heard of this theory because it has a very striking name. It is a theory that uh, distances itself from Newtonian deterministic science, which is what, in a way, has prevailed in a world until, until a century ago when quantum physics emerged and things began to change. Well, this chaos theory departs from Newton's deterministic science, as we are saying, which is based on the concept of cause and effect, but which would not admit initially that a small change could, in the course of time, cause a big change, such as the image of a butterfly flapping its wings in the Amazon or in Sri Lanka, causing a tornado in Texas. Newton's deterministic science approaches things in a proportional way. That is, it does not consider these big changes. However, this is where chaos theory comes in. Chaos theory is another scientific theory that comes to explain things like the displacement of plankton in the seas, the disordered movement of stars, or climate processes, for example. It also explains things like the synchronization of neurons in the brain, or even epidemics, how epidemics operate, or stock market fluctuations or even the chains of flight delays at airports. All of that can be explained through chaos theory. Precisely here, Newtonian science has little to do. Why? Because Newtonian science is based on phenomena where there is a very small number of variables. And in these cases, we are talking about systems systems with an almost infinite number of variables, specifically of non-linear dynamical systems, which is what they call chaotic systems. Not everything is really so chaotic. There is an order also in chaotic systems, but it, it is more uh, difficult to discover. Ultimately, we are talking about complex systems, systems which have an almost infinite number of variables and, therefore, Newtonian science, which always works with very few variables, can hardly reach valid conclusions in these complex systems, which are non-linear systems, that is to say, which follow relationships which are not strictly proportional. And therefore, the proportions can differ greatly. Hence, the leap between the slight flutter of the butterfly and the tornado that can arise from that flutter. The fact that complex systems have almost infinite variables makes the universe just such a complex, chaotic system, a flexible and therefore largely unpredictable system. This also explains the atmospheric and meteorological systems. Notice that even with all the computer processing, 
meteorology is not able to make uh, accurate weather predictions beyond three days. Beyond three days, they have to work with probabilities because you don't know exactly what is going to happen in the atmospheric system. The same is also true for social phenomena. They are not a linear relationships either. They are not cause and effect relationships. This is exactly where chaos theory and the butterfly effect come in. And what we are being told from these approaches is that any action set in motion in this universe, which is a complex system, generates an endless sequence of consequences. So endless and so complex a sequence of consequences that over time it becomes unpredictable. All this was put before the scientific world by a meteorologist and mathematician called Edward Lawrence, who was the father of the chaos theory. Specifically, in 1963, Lawrence asked the Massachusetts Institute of Technology for permission to use what was then the most powerful computer in the world. With this computer, Lawrence wanted to carry out research into weather forecasting. He wanted to see, through computer-processed equations, how certain weather forecasts could work. At one point during his research, Lawrence wanted to review some data he had obtained on a simulation of atmospheric changes over two months. He wanted to test this simulation with the MIT computer, but found that the results he obtained in this review were radically different from what he had previously obtained. He found that at the beginning the results were very similar, but that over time, in those two months of simulation, the results began to change dramatically. By the end of the simulation, one forecast and the other had nothing to do with each other. Lawrence was studying the problem, trying to figure out what had happened, and in the end, he realized that the radical change in results had happened simply because he had simplified some figures in one parameter. The computer did not allow more than three decimal places. He had done the first simulation with six decimal places, and yet in the computer he had entered three decimal places. In other words, in the first calculations the value of the parameter was, for example, 27.6529. 932, whereas in the computer calculations he had written 27.652, which was just three decimal places less. Well, the initial minimum variation had caused large alterations in the short and medium term. This was the beginning of the butterfly effect theory. Ultimately, the practical consequence of the butterfly effect is that in complex systems, such as the weather or the stock market or the universe itself or the earth, it is very difficult to predict anything with any certainty. This is why, in science, when it comes to these topics, we always talk about probabilities. Nothing is stated with absolute certainty. But this would lead us to think and reason some more things. As you know, the IPCC, the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, also works with probabilities in its climate projections, given that the Earth's climate system is also a complex system. The IPCC points out that the probability of abrupt climate
climate change between now and 2050 is certainly very high. That once the two degree difference in temperatures compared to the pre-industrial era is exceeded, the consequences can be absolutely unpredictable. The sad fact is that the last year the two degrees were already exceeded. This means uh, a risk not only of mass extinction of a species, but even of the extinction of the human race due to a collapse of civilization and the destruction of living conditions on Earth. But these are probabilities within chaos theory, which also admits the butterfly effect, that is, a small change in any one of the infinite variables of the complex non-linear chaotic system of the complex system Earth could lead to a chain of consequences that would cause major alterations in the short and medium term. In other words, although at the moment the chances are very high of an abrupt climate change fatal to life on the planet, we may be able to achieve a change through the butterfly effect. That is where the radical hope that we talk about in this program comes from. Maybe we can do it. And the question I pose to you, the question, the question I pose to you, who are listening to this program, is this. How can you know if you, from your smallness, with your small act in the service of the earth and life, that is, with your butterfly fluttering. Who can tell you if you will not be setting in motion a chain of consequences that totally transform the present probabilities of civilizational collapse? Who is to say whether you are not thereby bringing about such a change, that is, the hurricane in the other part of the world, that will prevent the collapse of life on Earth and, with it, of all civilization. How can you know if you, from your smallness, with your small act, are not setting in motion a change that avoids disaster? All this is what we can ask ourselves from the chaos theory and the butterfly effect. It is certainly a possibility. Perhaps that is why Eduardo Galeano, the renowned Uruguayan journalist and writer, said something as inspiring and hopeful as this. A lot of small people in small places doing small things can change the world. Midnight Sun is a radio program that seeks to foster the process of social transformation needed to address the social, climate and extinction emergency we are now entering. Our goal, that you put your talents at the service of the Earth and the terrestrial community of life. Join the tribe at the Midnight Sun, the social media hub of the Rainbow Warriors 3.5 Global Campaign. Charter. The Earth Charter is an international declaration of ethical principles for the respect and care of life, ecological integrity, social and economic justice, democracy, non-violence and peace. But it is also a worldwide movement which seeks to inspire in all people a new sense of global interdependence and share responsibility for the well-being of the whole human family, the community of life and future generations, thus becoming a vision of hope 
and a call to action. Learn more about the Earth Charter at earthcharter.org. Earth Charter, turning conscience into action. I have told you about Edward Lawrence, this mathematician and meteorologist who was the father of the chaos theory. But here we must also talk about a woman, because, because it seems that the women are left out of the process of the scientific discovery. And in this case, there was also a woman, a woman a scientist, who had a lot to do with these developments. Specifically, it was Dr. Helen Fetter, since it was she who found the underlying order in the chaos of non-linear systems, who found the systemic attractor which, interestingly, in the graphs, also took the form of a butterfly with its wings spread out. Returning to the butterfly effect, you can also find a very illustrative video on YouTube. It is a video from National Geographic, the prestigious scientific journal, made by a Catalan called Adria Lopez Balthales. In this National Geographic video, he traces how, from the humble dandelion plant, which is a wild plant with a very common yellow flower in Europe. How, from this humble plant, a flood in the other side of the world can be prevented. In this video, Lopez Balfels explains that for him, this process of the butterfly effect begins in Germany, with a German family living in a village, the Peterman family who spread dandelion seeds in the countryside and that what they do is to promote the development of the insect population in the area, including the marmalade hoverfly. This species then migrates south to Switzerland, where it stimulates the growth of more dandelion in those areas, which attracts even more insects. This massive population of insects that develops in Switzerland serves as food for a bat, the Pipistrello bat, which in turn migrates to the shores of the Mediterranean, specifically to the Ebro River Delta in Spain. In this area, a bat reserve was established some years ago with the intention of controlling the insect population in a predominantly rice growing region without having to use pesticides, which are, as you know, extremely harmful to the entire ecosystem. In this way, through a process started in Germany, with the sowing of dandelion seeds, ecosystems in Switzerland and Spain are being supported by strengthening the bat population. But in addition, from Spain this approach has reached Malaysia, as a researcher called Juliana Senawi is replicating the idea implemented in Spain in the Kilim Geoforest Park. There they have also made a bat reserve with Cape nectar bats, fruit bats and flying foxes so-called because they are very big, very big bats. These bats are pollinators of mangroves, shrubs that grow on the seashore and hold the coastal land in place with their roots, creating a first line of defense against floods and tsunamis. The natural barrier of the mangroves is of benefit to the fishermen of the area, and thus to the local communities and, of course, to the economy of the region. Look at how, from the humble dandelion in Germany, 
through the marmalade hoverfly in Switzerland and bats in Spain. We come to the mangroves in Malaysia and even humans who protect themselves with those mangroves and benefit from them. This could be one more example of the butterfly effect. And another example could be the one we told you about in the episode 6 of this program, the reintroduction of the wolf to the Yellowstone National Park in the United States, which also set in motion a powerful chain of consequences. As I explained it in episode 6, the reintroduction of wolves uh, to Yellowstone in, in the year 1995 has brought about an almost total recovery of the park's ecosystems in less than 30 years, even restoring the area's rivers to their meandering courses, which irrigate the valleys much better. And this only by reintroducing 31 wolfies uh, species that had been made extinct in Yellowstone by hunters in 1926. This is why we encourage you to take part in Rainbow Warriors 3.5, this social movement that aims to bring about many butterfly effects, as many as the number of people who join this adventure. In the previous episode, the 8th, we talked about tribes, those small groups of or teams of people that we propose from Rainbow Warriors, who put in their talents and the skills at the service of the earth, dedicate themselves to making butterfly effects. About the proposal of the tribes, we are going to leave you a link in the credits of, the credits of this program, so that you can know better the basic idea on which we are building this social movement and how we could implement it through the tribes of Rainbow Warriors 3.5. Ultimately, we invite you to, in your own small way, to set a butterfly effect in motion. Who knows if one small action of yours will not be the original cause of a major change in the history of humanity and life on Earth as a whole. Who knows if that tribe you formed with five friends of yours with the intention of sowing the fields with wild flowers from your region will not be what prevents the bees in your country from becoming extinct forever and in time prevent the extinction of many other species including perhaps our own by bringing about the recovery of ever larger habitats where life takes the reins to restore ecosystems crucial to the survival of our planet. Who knows if that Rainbow Warriors tribe you formed to plant wild flowers won't do all that. You might never know that your idea, with the help of your five friends, was the one that brought about a change of unsuspected dimensions. You might never know that you were the crucial point where life was able to get back on its feet. You might never know. But does it matter? You will only know that you did your bit. A tiny grain of sand, which, however, may have transformed a whole planet and the lives of billions of humans, animals, trees and plants across her surface. 
No, you might never know. You might never know. So I'm convinced that somehow, somewhere in space time or non space no time, life will let you know. Midnight Sun, the program of those who will be spoken of by future generations. been coming up with new ideas to understand how you can change the world from your smallness. We have been talking about the butterfly effect and we have started the explanations by referring to a Chinese proverb that, that says, the flapping of the wings of a butterfly can be felt on the other side of the world. And we have also quoted a phrase from the German philosopher Fichte, which also suggests this strange phenomenon. We have made a synopsis of A Sound of Thunder, a short story by a science fiction writer Ray Bradbury, in which he also raised the idea of how a small change in the past can translate into a very different future. And we have also made conjectures with the idea of what would have happened if in 1905, the year in which Einstein published five crucial academic papers that have changed our world, if in 1905, before he wrote those papers, on his way to work at the patent office in Bern, the clock in the city tower had been two minutes late, and a car had run over Einstein and killed him. Our world would not be the world we know today. We have talked about the butterfly effect from a scientific point of view, and to do so we have outlined the chaos theory. We have refocused complex systems, and we have talked about the research of Edward Lawrence and Helen Fetter, who developed a series of mathematical formulas with which they not only explained the chaos theory, but also raised the possibility of the butterfly effect, scientific developments that lead us to talk about probabilities, remember, probabilities of occurrence in natural phenomena, and not about certainties. And finally, we have given an example of how a family, by spreading dandelion seeds in Germany, and through the marmalade hoverfly and bats, was helping the mangroves of Malaysia and thereby preventing floods that could end the livelihoods and even the lives of millions of people. These are ideas that are well worth reflecting on. And I would like you to be aware that all of this will bring an immediate benefit in your life. No doubt about it. Because here, too, there is the butterfly effect. A small change in your thoughts, thanks to what we have said in this program, a small change in your thoughts can give rise to a change of worldview within you. And that change of worldview 
can radically transform your reality and your way of being in the world, thus evoking great changes in your life. Yes, here too we have the butterfly effect, because power is in the small things. Or has not the tiny invisible coronavirus already changed the world we live in, however small it may be? Perhaps we could finally refer to a quote from Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings, in which Elrond's half elven, a great master of his science and a great warrior, was quoted as saying, Yet such is aft the course of deeds that move the wheels of the world. The small hands do them because they must, while the eyes of the great are elsewhere. The small hands, the small humans, the insignificant ones, the unnoticed people in the world are responsible for changing this world. It is in your hands. If you want to, you can set in motion a butterfly effect and change the world. Between all of us, between all those little hands and little people, we can achieve the transformations that the great ones cannot achieve. Midnight Sun is the communication hub of the Rainbow Warriors 3.5 Global Campaign, which aims to get 3.5% of the population to put their talents at the service of the Earth and her community of life, in order to mitigate the climate and extinction emergency, and thus prevent the collapse of our civilization. But for that, we need help. Join the Midnight Sun tribe of all colors and become a patron for just $1 a month. Find us on Patreon as Midnight Sun. And that concludes Midnight Sun for today. Thank you for having listened to us so far. But before we say goodbye, we would like to thank, as always, Kim Robertson for allowing us to use her Celtic Harp music, which has been with us every day in this program. Thanks to John Mario Diaz and Radio Chacaruna, the first radio station that is uh, broadcasting this program and spreading the Rainbow Warriors 3.5 social movement. Thanks to Blake Kendall for lending his voice and for his great feedback. And to Marta Ventura for working from the engine room to make this program a reality. And we want to make a call to action join Midnight Sun's tribe of all colors, which is none other than the Rainbow Warriors 3.5 social movement. Rainbow Warriors 3.5 is a social movement which seeks billions of people to put their talents and skills at the service of the Earth and the terrestrial community of life. This is the tribe we are talking about here, a large tribe 
made up of small tribes of friends, of family members, coming together to put their talents at the service of the earth. And we encourage you to create one of those small tribes, because there are those small hands that can change the world. We leave a link in the credits for you to discover what Rainbow Warriors 3.5 is all about and how you can create your own small tribe. Nothing more. Greetings from Spain. May the sun shine in your eyes at midnight. Avoid the social collapse we are heading towards because of the climate and extinction emergency, we are going to need 3.5% of the population to take action. That means we need help. Lots of help. If you have an independent radio station and want to share Midnight Sun's radio programs on it, find out more at midnightsun.com.es slash broadcasting. Midnight Sun the social media hub of the Rainbow Warriors 3.5 Global Campaign. Sol de medianoche.